yeah. So, um, so last year you were in Massachusetts with a team with Lindsay and a couple other people. So, um, Lindsay, can you, can you, I, so pool boy already talked about the story a little bit of like his version of it. So Lindsay, do you have a version that you have of how you got the pool boy <laughs> over to Massachusetts and, uh, checking out the Boston, Boston nightlife? So it was very much just before the open. And I remember I had a solid two others and we needed a guy and I always have Nate to jump in, but he is very much past his competitor days. But if we need it, he'll pop in. He just doesn't prefer to. So I was posting on um, social media saying we were looking for a male, you know, in this general area or like drivable at least. And I believe it was a mutual friend that DM'd me saying she might know someone given some strange circumstance, even though he lived nowhere near here. And I think that's how it started. Did she DM you then kind of connecting us? I don't even really remember. She did. It was Liz. Liz uh, yeah. DM'd, she, she DM'd me and, and asked me um, what I was doing for the open. And I, and I told her I had just I had just been uh, let go of my job. At standard at standard strength as head coach um for reasons i still to this day so from there i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do for the open i mean i had gyms obviously in the area that would lend me um space to do the open they're like always welcoming um around here um and then it wasn't until like yeah liz hit me up and then she asked me what i was doing for the open and i told her i have no idea and she said well i have a team that's looking for another athlete and i was like oh cool um where at and she said uh the only caveat it's it's in boston and i was like <laughs> oh shit so <laughs> went back and forth with it she was just like hey um just connect with them see what happens so we just started chit chatting and man we were like literally trying to figure out plane tickets uh revenue of money um car and like literally within the span of like a day and a half like everything just fell together. I got a car. Lindsay offered me to coach there. I off, I got a, a job offer at another gym in like Chelsea uh, to coach there. So I was just like, all right, I guess I'm doing this. So I did it. It's funny from it's funny from my end because it's like this total random person on the internet that I'm DMing and we're like talking, hey, like come be on our team. We need a fourth. And in my head, I'm like, there's no freaking way. Like we have no idea who each other you're gonna get on a plane the next like 48 hours and get here for before the open. In my head, I'm like, even my husband, he's like, there's no way. Oh my God, no, there's no way. And then he kept shooting DMs and he was very positive about it. And I'm like, is this kid for real right now? Like, I'm like, I know nothing about this kid. He seems pretty athletic. I'm told he's athletic. So he could have been terrible for all we knew and just showed up and been an awful athlete. You know what I mean? To yeah, me, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at, at that point, I was so like, like depressed and down and out from losing my my uh my head coaching job. And and I think even when I was on the first first time on the podcast with you um you were I, at the I, gym I, yeah i was at the gym and i even told you like hey i had recruited uh these athletes to be a part of a team so i had literally brought a team over there myself um so to have that opportunity be kind of taken away from me i was like just like looking for almost every any olive branch that was like floating around um so then when this came up i was like all right i'm gonna do everything i can to make it happen and um man i couldn't be more more happy it was it was crazy when i told my parents the story they they thought i was like wait you don't know these people how do you know they're not going to just rape you and kill you when you get there and i was like <laughs> the risk i'm taking the it's so taking. wild it's so yeah. wild to think about now because it was so it was so much fun it might have been like my favorite season ever it was so much yeah fun. And, and we couldn't have vibed even more like yeah it was ridiculous from the moment we met like things just connected so easily it was, it yeah. was fun yeah and you two guys were connected uh during the semifinals too as well so like when you guys it was you when you you two guys were lifting together at the same time for most of the workouts yeah it, me and you know it's always it me and you mike because luke and danny are freakishly fast and they're shorter and me and mike move much more similarly so it's for synchro stuff it just kind of made sense so a lot of times mike and i were paired yeah, yeah so, the, the only workout we didn't pair at at semis was like snatches. that skier dumbbell snatch one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Lindsay, how, when you when you first met Pool Boy, um, how like what was your like first 
you know, thoughts of him and like, say like, you know, like what, what was going through your mind when you first saw him? You're like, okay, this is, this could be our, this could, this could be the guy. Oh, it was no good. That was like, that was our option. That, that was it. So, but honestly, I mean, I am sure you kind of know Mike's personality at this point. It's very similar to my own. So we, I'm pretty sure we just like gave each other huge hugs when we met each other as if we'd known each other for a while. So it was all very easy, weirdly, weirdly easy. <laughs> <laughs> so so um how did you guys like manage to figure out like okay during this workout like you know pool boy will like you know link up with you and then you know then you'll have like somebody else linking up with you like how, how did that how did that like kind of management work mike do you want to jump on that do you want me to do it apparently me because he's gone yeah you <laughs> oh but I'm, I'm i it was weird i can still see you guys oh really no you're back Am I there? You're here. Yeah, yeah, you're here. Okay, yeah. I think it just depended on the yeah, workout. Lizzie, you can, you you can ask. I mean? Yeah, it just kind of depended on the workout. Like, I remember during, trying to remember some of the workouts, during qualifiers, there was one that we did very well on that was uh, dumbbell thrusters that were synchro and shuttle runs. And it like one like that, it just makes sense. Like Danny and Luke are shorter and they're speedy as hell. So it wouldn't have made any sense to split them up and then be stuck on my pace with Luke and then stuck on Mike's pace for Danny. It just made more sense to pair them together. They crush it. Me and Mike just push ourselves and do what we can with each other. So, but then with the dumbbell snatch one that he was talking about, um, I believe the reason for that was one pairing did more reps at a lighter weight and one pair did less reps at a heavier weight on the snatches and i believe mike wanted geez i don't remember more reps and lighter and i wanted heavier and less reps i believe so that's why we did that swap pairing so i paired with luke and he paired with danny okay okay now i um during the semifinals i mean you guys were i was watching you guys like specifically during the whole semifinals so um i believe it was the end of the work end of, end of one of the work i think it was the last workout in semifinals so i i look i linked up uh pool boys uh instagram so i saw this and i'm like what oh, this. what happened what, what happened to this oh the last workout we were doing so well too we were like top 20 and uh yeah i concussed myself on that workout <laughs> literally literally concussed myself i was lit i i'm sure mike can confirm this i was falling over the worm trying to jump over it for burpees i was so disoriented but they also for handstand push-ups it, it was just like a hard-ass floor the wheelchair? Like, no no it's no me. no no carrying me off the, the last workout I know you guys went on team. You guys are on, on two different teams this year. So was there any thought of, of coming back on to, you know, CrossFit 1977's team at all? Or if there was any, we, we had some discussions and um, if we were to bring the crew back, it would, it would be on the West because the West sucks. <laughs> and the pattern, I'm just being, I'm just being honest out. If, if you're not in the top, like, I want to say individually, if you're not part of the top, like 20, maybe 25 individuals, like you're not going to make it on the East. Um, if you're not part of the top 10 teams here out on the West, you're, you wouldn't have a chance on the East. And wh why do you think, why do you think that? Cause originally like uh, CrossFit early, yeah, when CrossFit earlier on, um was around it was actually kind of like the opposite like the west was kind of like the strong one you know that's, for, a, that's a very good point there was just with just time there's just a power shift you know it's just like in any sport like if you look at the nfl um there's always like certain divisions where the power for like you know years and years it's always been like the niners or the the patriots that are just dominating and like certain divisions will be like the dominating divisions but just the power just eventually shifts over time and I think that's just how it is with with CrossFit. And, you know, in the past, yeah, the the West has always kind of been more the thought of the uh, has the, ha, has been always thought of as like the tougher area with the bigger athletes. But a lot of those athletes are now either in the grandpa division or retired. And <laughs> if you look at the East, that, that's where all the powerhouses are. You got Proven, Training Think Tank, Mayhem even HWPO, all the big powerhouse camps are out on the East. Like mm -hmm. besides Invictus and um, Puppy, Dogs, Dog. yeah. Puppy Dog Athletics, there's nothing like, that's it. Yeah. 
I mean, and, yeah, and you also have like obviously Misfit, and then you have like Brute, which is down in Florida. So, exactly. There's so two, yeah, there's brothers that I missed. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, it's it's large. So yeah, obviously, I would think you guys would go to the west and a lot of people are staying in the west too because they're like i don't want to go to the east what's the point you know i may have a shot to go to the crossfit games if i stay over on the west compared to moving back to the east well someone was texting me about how how like Lindsay, you probably know where does kelsey keel live currently mm, i know she Ohio? doesn't live in boston anymore but doesn't, no, she, still, doesn't she still live is in philly the is she in philly still something like that but she's yeah. competing out of the west well and her someone, bo- someone brought it to my attention that she's been just like constantly on her stories like airplanes like just going back and forth well i think i think her boyfriend pitches for the san francisco giants and i think he's in like a far i think he's in a farm league so that's why she's staying there i guess but is she I, I don't using know. is she using that as like a loophole in the in the system to just stay i don't with think them? there's a loophole though does it say that for east and west or can you just have to do the workouts of the affiliate like teams or no i didn't look into it because i wasn't planning on anything indie but i had always thought it was your resident of uh of address because that's like why the issues of ellie turner came up right why like why ellie turner yeah. couldn't get an exemption and she yeah, had to I'm go back sure. to australia yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's I don't. I know. mean, I because I'm not seen so often. I can't keep up. So yeah, I mean, I know she was in. I know she was in Philly for a while too. So and then I don't know. I mean, where she's at or where she's going back and forth. But I mean, that's definitely interesting and something to look into. So 